Our mission is to provide outstanding patient care for the patients that live within the CSRA or the Central Savannah River area. It's an area encompassing about 750,000 individuals. So uh, within that, we actually have four main pillars that we use to provide this care. Pillar number one is obviously outstanding patient care, where we utilize not only the hospital, the university, uh, but also the, uh, the pharmacists that work with us to provide this care. Uh, the second pillar that we have is research. We are a large research institution where we do basic research and we do clinical research. We have a fairly large translational research center. The third one is the outreach program that we have and we continue to have where we reach out into the community to extend this patient care. The final pillar is actually education because we are at the Medical College of Georgia. We try to educate the medical students, the uh, residents, and the infectious disease fellows to provide this uh, excellent care. Biofilms are involved in many disease processes, including uh, such things as chronic non-healing ulcers, uh, infective endocarditis, catheter-associated uh, urinary tract and bloodstream infections, and biofilms are important in antimicrobial resistance in all settings. One of our goals is to understand how microbes uh, synthesize biofilms so that we can develop agents to disrupt biofilms and therefore the diseases that they are associated with. The other part of the Translational Research Service is actually initiating phase one, phase two, and phase three, and phase four studies with novel antifungal agents, and there's several ones that are in the pipeline, novel antimicrobial agents specifically geared towards staph aureus infections and gram-negative infections, including E. coli, and vaccines, newer vaccines that are being investigated to prevent actually urinary tract infections uh, in individuals that have recurrent urinary tract infection. Our part of the Ryan White program, which is a federal program that is then dispersed to cities and communities throughout the United States, is specifically for non-major metropolitan areas. We are Ryan White Part C primarily, although we have additional parts. This allows us to provide HIV care to anyone who is referred here who has no other means of receiving HIV care. Now that includes not only seeing the, the providers, um, they receive case management, they'll also, through the program, a specific part of it, be enrolled in a separate program for initiation of antiretroviral therapy, which is our treatment for HIV. We actually service at least 13 counties around us. We are certainly the most um, suburban of the communities in this area. There are many rural communities surrounding us with uh, clients who are living with HIV who do avail themselves of our services on a regular basis. We have a bank of psychologists that work with us every single day in clinic. They see all our patients with us and they are very much an integral part of the team. And our psychology staff actually also trains psychologists who are interested specifically uh, in the area of HIV care. We have a dental program now. Anyone who has no other dental coverage or doesn't have a dentist themselves can be seen, evaluated, have a full assessment, and they will get uh, their regular, every six month dental cleaning as needed for free through our program. The antimicrobial stewardship program has become very important not only in the inpatient setting, but also in the outpatient setting. Antimicrobial resistance is well known to be something that develops in light of antimicrobial use, especially inappropriate use. In fact, five out of six Americans, recent data says, gets an antibiotic, and 30% of those patients, the antibiotic is not indicated. So this tells us there's a big problem that's maybe pushing towards resistance. So that's where antimicrobial stewardship comes into play. One of the monikers that we try really hard to avoid in antimicrobial stewardship is this concept that we're the antimicrobial police. We don't want to give off the impression that we're looking over someone's shoulder to evaluate the antimicrobials that they're prescribing. Instead, what we want to do is make sure that our patients are receiving five core components uh, of antimicrobial prescribing. And so those are making sure that the right patient receives the right dose of the right drug via the right route for the right duration. And when we can capitalize and optimize all five of those components, so one of the main challenges in infectious disease 
is the fact that it is a specialty where we don't have a lot of students and residents going into this specialty. Because of that, there is actually a lack of infectious disease specialists, not only in this area, but throughout the country and throughout the world. Our Infectious Diseases Fellowship Program aims to train the next generation of infectious disease professionals through a wide variety of research opportunities, clinical care, in different contexts ranging from transplant to orthopedic infections. We aim to have them see a wide variety of cases to make sure that they feel comfortable in all the different circumstances that they'll see in their patients in the future. One of the advantages I feel that we offer as a training program at our institution is the wide array of clinical cases and case index that fellows will see as they come here for their infectious disease training. Infectious disease is one of the few specialties where we can actually eradicate an infection. There are very few specialties where we can eradicate a disease and the disease is gone. We are able to basically bring the patients from a severe disease or a life-threatening disease, able to save their lives, and they are able to go home and be with their family. Mm -hmm.